Greetings, friends around the world. This is Dr. Bob Teal for the Bible News Prophecy Channels. Have you been following Pope Francis? Have you been paying attention to the words that he's given? Some of the messages that he's given? Have you seen the large crowds that he's been attracting and drawing? Is it possible that this Marian focused pontiff could be fulfilling prophecy? You say, well, wait a second. He's a pope, and uh, people in the Church of Rome uh, revere Mary, they venerate Mary, they say things about Mary. Well, this particular pontiff is different. How? He's taking more marrying steps than any other pontiff in current history. Actually, the day, the first trip he made after becoming elected pope, when he left the walls or the confines of Vatican City, he actually went to the church of Mary Major, uh, and while he was there, he uh, dedicated his pontificate to Mary. A few days later, uh, he approached another statue of Mary. Uh, with Mary Major, there's no statue, it's a a, a painting, and he continually has had a Marian focus. And on April 15th, 2013, or so, just a month or so after he became pontiff, he asked Cardinal Jose Policorpo of Lisbon to dedicate his pontificate to, quote, Our Lady of Fatima. Now, what's Fatima? Well, Fatima is a town in Portugal that supposedly, in 1917, a female figure appeared once a month for six months. And people decided that this figure was Mary, even though it never said it was Mary. And what's odd from a Catholic perspective is the only three people who saw this Marian uh, apparition, because they later said it was Mary, even though the apparition never said it was Mary, described it as looking like this. Now, in 1917 Portugal, it was not appropriate for women to be exposing any flesh, not even... Uh, Harlots dressed like this in public. They wouldn't be seen this way. Uh, but this is actually what was seen. According to who? According to the parish priest and according to Canon Formaggio, who uh, the Vatican had actually assigned to research this. This is what was seen in Fatima, Portugal. This is what all the records say was actually seen. Not the typical Marian picture that a lot of people point to where she's, got, she's covered basically all the way down to her toes. Sometimes her toes are exposed. But this is actually what was seen in, in Fatima, Portugal. And the Pope should know that. Yet he had his pontificate actually dedicated to this thing that definitely was not Mary. Now the Bible warns that people are going to be deceived by signs and lying wonders. And Jesus said even the very elect are subject to be deceived because so much deception is going to come into the world, only the very elect uh, would not necessarily be deceived by it. And what's going to happen if the Pope continues to promote worship toward Mary, or excuse me, veneration is a term they like to use, but directing people towards Mary? If an apparition starts to show up, won't people decide, aha, the Pope's been talking about Mary, so it's turned to Mary, and here is Mary. Of course, it won't truly be Mary of the Bible, but a lot of people will not care, and they'll do what this type of thing says. Now, on the uh, 28th of April, the Pope spoke, and he says, I want to entrust, and this was, this was uh, translated by a, a Catholic uh, translator by the name of uh, Joseph uh, Trevick, the confirmandi in all of you to Our Lady. So he wants to uh, try, turn over to the Lady, uh, those who were confirmed to be Catholic. The Virgin Mary teaches us what it means to live by the Holy Spirit, what it means to walk in the newness of God in our life. Uh, Mary invoked the Spirit with the apostles in the upper room. Every time they came together in prayer, we were supported by the spiritual presence of the Mother of Jesus to receive the gift of the Spirit and have the ability to bear witness to the risen Jesus. I say this to you in a special way, those who have received confirmation today. May Mary help you to be attentive to that which the Lord asks of you, and always to live and walk according to the Holy Spirit. Now, in the Easter light, fruit of the Spirit, we turn to the Mother of the Lord. Notice Pope Francis' emphasis on Mary and turning to Mary as a solution and an aid. But that's not what the Bible teaches. Now, I'd like to read something from the Bible. This is going to be from 1 Timothy chapter 2, uh, verses 5 through 6. I'm going to read from uh, the Dewey Rames book, Bible. I'm going to try to mostly read from Catholic translations of the Bible so people will realize that even Catholic translations are warning against 
some of the things that the pontiff is doing. 1 Timothy 2, verse 5. For there is one God and one mediator of God and men, the man Jesus, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a redemption for all, a testimony in due times. Well, Mary's not the mediator, and you're not supposed to turn to her to be attentive to what God asks. He, but he continues, the, the pontiff, to, to do this type of thing. Now, I mentioned uh, Fatima. Well, on May 13th, 2013, on what's called the Feast Day of Our Lady of Fatima, uh, uh, Jose Policorpo uh, consecrated the uh, uh, pontificate, if you will, of uh, Pope Francis to, to, to Mary. And here's what, it, what he said. This is uh, from Bishop Jose Policorpo. So, you consecrate lady, you who are the mother of the church, the ministry, the new pope, fill your heart, the tenderness of God that you have experienced as anyone so can embrace all men and women at this time with the love of your son, Jesus Christ. And then, uh, continuing, we have uh, another bishop read, uh, read a message that was sent there. It says, The Holy Father expresses his satisfaction for the initiative and deep appreciation for the satisfaction of his desire in union of prayer with all the pilgrims of Fatima, which at heart give apostolic blessing as a pledge of all goods. Now, this particular article was written in uh, Portuguese, and I had it machine translated, so it seemed a little bit awkward. But notice the focus on Mary, the Fatima situation. And again, Fatima was not Mary. What are people going to do if a Marian image actually shows up, is not seen by three little kids, but seen in public, and it doesn't look like this, but looks like what people expect Mary is supposed to look, look like? Now, Pope Francis went to uh, Brazil in uh, late July 2013. What happened before he went? Well, before he went, he actually decided to again go to the Church of Mary Major, which in uh, Italian is called Basilica di Santa Maria Maggiore. Now, I've been there, and when my wife and I were there, I asked somebody working there, I said, well, when the Pope dedicated his pontificate to Mary, where was he? And they showed a picture, or they, they pointed me to an area where there's a particular picture, which we'll show you here, and that particular picture is considered to be the oldest or one of the oldest representations of Mary uh, in Rome. And this particular picture is believed to be over a thousand years old. Some believe it's uh, an original picture, which is, I think, crazy, but that's what some claim. But the Pope went there uh, as soon as he became Pope. He went there also just before he went to Brazil. That wasn't expected he was going to do that. Then he went to Brazil, and we'll get to that in a second. But when he came back, he also went down and prayed before the uh, icon that was there that's supposed to be Mary. Now, this icon is known as the Salus Populi Romani, or the health of the Roman people, or salvation of the Roman people. Basically, some believe that this icon performs some type of a miracle to keep the plague from the city or from affecting it as much. And this icon is something that Pope Francis seems to want to go before and kneel down before and worship before frequently. Now, when he went to Brazil, what did he do? Well, on July 24th, quote, Pope Francis has arrived in the southeastern Brazilian city of Aparecida, where he's celebrating Mass with tens of thousands of Roman Catholics. About 2,000 police were on hand for ride security at the shrine of Apar. Resita, the country symbol, the Virgin Mary. Officials expected 200,000 people were to gather outside this shrine during Francis' visit. This particular pontiff is very, 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 very popular. He is so popular that when my wife and I were in Rome recently, we were going to try to, to possibly see him. We had tickets actually to see him. The nuns told us you probably wouldn't get a seat unless you get there very, very early because unlike other pontiffs where five or 10,000 people were showing up to see him, like 100,000 people were coming 
on, this is the Wednesday viewing, if you will, it's a public viewing, uh, and it, he was just so popular we probably couldn't see him, and so we decided not, not to do that. Furthermore, the next the couple days later in Brazil, he held uh, uh, a couple of, a mass and a pre-mass vigil, and it's estimated three million people came to Copacabana Beach in order to hear him. Now, the people in Rio de Janeiro seem to be somewhat secular, and when the Rolling Stones lead singer, a person of Rolling Stones fame, Mick Jagger, was there a few years before. He drew a million people to Copacabana Beach, maybe a million, million and a half. That's a lot of people. But the Pope got twice the number. He definitely has rock star uh, potential. And by the way, when he was uh, before the shrine, he says, What joy I feel as I come to the house of the mother of every Brazilian, the shrine of the lady. The day after my election as Bishop of Rome, I visited the Basilica of St. Mary Major in Rome in order to entrust my ministry as a successor of Peter to Our Lady. Today I've come here to ask Mary, our mother, for the success of World Youth Day and to place her feet in the life of the people of Latin America. So the pontiff is going even further. He's trying to tell people in Latin America, look, here's your shrine in Mary. We want Mary to be a big part of this. Uh, he's telling, he's, he concludes, one of the things he says is, Dear friends, we've come to knock at the door of Mary's house. We're not supposed to go to Mary's house to knock. It's to Jesus. And it's interesting that Catholic prophecy foretells a time when there are going to be a lot of Marian images and that Mary is going to rise up in order to help people become Catholic, if you will. I'm going to read a couple of brief quotes. It says, The power over the demons in the last ages will be especially great. The power of Mary over all demons will be particularly outstanding in the last period of time. Uh, the training edge chasing the great saints who appeared toward the end of the world reserved for the mother of God. So this alleged Mary is going to have all kinds of power. Now if you want more on the Catholic prophecies and some of the other prophecies that I'm not going to have time to go through in this short video clip, you can go to www.cogwriter.com that's www.cogwriter.com and I have an article uh, about this particular one here. Uh, it's been said, according to Catholic prophets, that Mary is going to extend the reign of Christ over the heathen and the uh, Mohammedans. In other words, there's a belief that because Mary is going to have influence directly and or indirectly, and again, this is not Mary of the Bible, that uh, the, the heathen and the uh, Muslims are actually going to become followers of an ecumenical Catholic religion that will rise up at the time of the end. If these apparitions do become public, people need to be concerned about them because people are going to believe it. Yet the Bible says, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, For we are to walk by faith and not by sight. Yet we're going to see that people are going to do the opposite. A Catholic prophecy from the 19th century said, The church prepares everything for the glorious arrival of Mary. And this is talking about the end times. And it seems that's what the Pope is doing. Now many have said Pope Francis is laying the groundwork for one world religion. And I will tell you that Marian images or female images that have been considered something like Mary are throughout other cultures. Uh, the Hindus uh, have a version of this or they are accepting actually of some of the Fatima versions of it, by the way. The Chinese have versions, and there are actually versions, versions in other parts of Asia. And of course, Latin America, you've got the Lady of Guadalupe and other things that are going out there. And these are part of Satan's tools to deceive people. And the current pontiff is going around trying to get people to turn toward Mary. Yes, he uses the word Jesus also. But he's combining the two, and that's not the emphasis that the Bible has. But speaking of the Bible, I'd like to read also from the, the Dewey Rames version of the Bible. And I'm going to read a prophecy in the book of uh, Isaiah, uh, starting with Isaiah chapter 47, verse uh, 1. It says, Come down, sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. So you'll notice that this version is tied into the, to the daughter of Babylon. And you know from the Old 
not only the Old Testament, but the New Testament warns about a Babylon rising up toward the time of the end, and that God's people aren't supposed to be part of her. Continuing, sit on the ground, there is no throne for the daughter of the Chaldeans, for you shall no longer be called delicate and tender. Verse 4, our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, is his name, the Holy One of Israel. Sit thou silent, and get thee into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for you shall no longer be called the Lady of the Kingdoms. So you'll notice that the Redeemer is our Lord of hosts. It's not this woman. And notice that since this woman is called the Lady of the Kingdoms, well, actually the term Lady of the Kingdoms is sometimes in certain Catholic writings referring to some version of Mary, who's also called the Lady of Nations and that type of thing. It ties, it ties in. Verse 7, You have said, I shall be a lady forever. Thou hast not laid these things to the heart, neither have you remembered your latter end. So God's saying, look, you think you're going to go on forever, but you're not. In the latter times, it's going to be done. Verse 9, These two things shall come upon thee suddenly in one day, barrenness and widowhood. All these things will come upon you because of the multitude of the, your sorceries and for the great hardness of your enchanters. And you best trusted in your wickedness. And it said, There's none that sees me. Thy wisdom and the knowledge, this has deceived thee. And thou hast said in thy heart, I am and there is no other. Evil shall come upon thee and shall not know the rising thereof. And calamity shall fall violently upon thee, which you cannot keep off. Misery shall come upon thee suddenly, and you shall not know. Stand now with your enchanters in the multitude of your sorceries in which you've labored from your youth. If so, it may profit thee anything, or that you may become stronger. You has failed in the multitude or thy counsels. Let now the astrologers stand and save thee. They that gather these at the stars and count the months, that they may tell you the things that are going to come to thee. Now, what's interesting is it says that things that were done in secret are going to become public. Well, things like this, the Church of Rome should know. This is what the image of Fatima actually looked like according to every single person who saw it. Yet people don't believe that. There are quite a few other scriptures that warn about this harlot woman uh, and a woman coming up at the time of the end. For example, this time I'm going to read from the New King James Version of the Bible, Nahum 3, verse 4. Because of the multitude of harlotries of the seductive harlot, the mistress of sorceries, who sells nations through her harlotries and families through her sorceries. And if you look at Revelation chapter 17 and 18, you're going to find expressions such as Revelation uh, 18, 7 through 8. As much as she glorified herself and lived in delicacies, so much torment and sorrow gives you to her, because she says in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow, and sorrow I shall not see. Therefore your, shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be burnt with fire, because God is strong, who shall judge her. Now this is from the Dewey Rames version of the Bible. You'll notice that the Dewey Rames version of the Bible in Isaiah 47, this woman is saying the same thing as this harlot woman is saying in Revelation chapter 18. The reality is the time is coming when more and more people are going to follow signs and lying wonders and turn further and further away from the true gospel. Uh, oddly, there's a belief within a group of people called the Fatima Center. Uh, one of the leaders there said that he was told that the successor of the successor of John Paul II is the one who's going to consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, so-called. And this is supposed to bring in all kinds of times of peace. But that's not the way to bring peace. The Bible says the way of peace they know not. Yet the Fatima Center says things such as Mary alone can give us life. But that's not what the Bible teaches. Now those associated with the Church of Rome have a particular respect for the Apostle Peter. I'd like to actually read from the New Jerusalem Bible, which is another Catholic accepted translation of the Bible, of something the Apostle Peter said. This will be from the book of Acts, chapter 4, starting in verse 8. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, addressed them. I'm going to cut down to verse 10. It's by the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, whom you sacrificed and God raised from the dead, by this name and no other that this man stands before you cured. This is the stone which you, the builders, rejected, but which has become the cornerstone. Only in him, that's Jesus, 
is their salvation. For of all the names in the world given to men, this is the only one by which we can be saved. So it's the name of Jesus, not Mary, that people can be saved under. Anyway, the Bible clearly warns about the dangers of a virgin, a lady, that it also calls a harlot. While Pope Francis is becoming very popular, the message he's teaching deviates severely from the Bible. The Bible warns about a false gospel in 2 Corinthians 11.4, and I'd like to read a passage from Galatians chapter 1, starting verse 6. And this is also from the New Jerusalem Bible. This is from the Apostle Paul. I am astonished that you are so promptly turning away from the one who called you in the grace of Christ and are going over to a different gospel. That is not another gospel, except there will be troublemakers among you who are seeking to pervert the gospel of Christ. But is that not what Pope Francis is doing by suggesting people turn to Mary as part of the, uh, the gospel to learn about Jesus? Now, a lot of people like how Francis talks. He says things that they like to hear. But the Bible warns that the false prophet has two horns like a lamb, but he speaks like a dragon. It's in Revelation 13. Now people say, well, wait a second. A dragon would be horrible and people would all follow, figure that out. Well, actually, the first time Satan the dragon spoke to people that we're aware of was in Genesis chapter 3, 1 through 6. And he talked to Eve and Eve found his words very appealing. So much so that she turned away from God. And I'm concerned that people will find certain things from Pope Francis so appealing that they will also turn away from God. Now, whether or not Pope Francis is the final false prophet the Bible warns about or not, that's not clear yet. But what is clear is he's certainly setting the stage up for people to accept signs and lying wonders and a false gospel, an emphasis on a lady, one that the Bible warns against. Jesus was clear that at the time of the end, deception would be prevalent and deceive all except the very elect. Please try to believe what the Bible says. Look what the Bible says. Don't fall for false gospel. Don't turn toward marrying images or apparitions. The Bible warns that those who do not have love the truth will fall for signs and lying wonders. And I believe Pope Francis, inadvertently, most likely at this stage, is definitely setting up the stage for this to occur. And when we see signs and lying wonders, if they do include some type of an image that people claim to be married, this will deceive many. I believe the Pope is setting the world stage up for this. You need to turn to God, turn to the Bible, not turn to Mary. Remember that Jesus is the author of salvation and the only name under heaven by which we can be saved.